this is this is this is What's up, you guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Got a great episode for you. First, MXPX.com. Thank you for all your orders. You guys have been amazing. I've been doing live streams on the MXPX Facebook, YouTube, all the channels, Instagram, um, switching it up on the My Career stuff as well. So uh, it's been so much fun. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out, being in the comments. You, you all know who you are. There's a lot of people that listen to this podcast that have been on on the uh, the lives. So it's been so much fun. I'm going to I'm going to continue. Anyway, um hey. Let's get into it. mxpx.com merch. We have all the merch stuff you could ask for and even maybe we might be missing a few things, but most of the stuff we got, new hoodies, t-shirts, uh crew neck sweatshirts, we have little trinkets, we have um those like stress balls as a punk punk natural punk head where I had one around here somewhere. Um we have coffee we got a lot of stuff. I mean, we are a full-on mom-and-pop shop. We're going for it. Anyway, I appreciate you and appreciate your orders. MXPX Live. We've got some live shows coming up. One more show at the end of the year to close off 2023 in Seattle. It's sold out. Thank you, MXPX and Diesel Boy. And then our first show of the year, January 6, 2024, at the Hollywood Palladium in Los Angeles, California, MXPX Less Than Jake, Reliant K, and Smoking Popes. Tickets are low. Tickets are very low, people. So don't wait on those tickets. Go get those tickets if you want to come see us. That show is going to be an event. That show is going to be insane. I would not doubt it if my cousins called me up and said, hey, we're coming down, cousin. Put me on the list. I'm inviting a bunch of friends out for that one. A bunch of band friends and, and everybody. Um, it's going to be good. All right. That's our first show of 2024. Come on out. Make it happen. And then uh, we have some other shows coming up. We got uh, February 9th, my daughter's birthday, in New York City at Webster Hall. And then uh, February 10th, Philadelphia, sold out. Thank you. We have March 15th in Atlanta, Georgia, at Buckhead Theater. March 16th, Orlando, Florida, at the Orlando House of Blues. And then we have uh, April 5th at, uh, in Denver, Colorado, at the Ogden Theater with MXPX. Oh, sorry. All these shows are with the Ataris, by the way. These New York, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Orlando, Denver. So April 5th in Denver at the Ogden Theater is with Five Iron Frenzy and the Ataris. And then the 6th, April 6th, Salt Lake City, the depot. Finally coming back. We had to cancel in 2020 when the whole world ended. We canceled Salt Lake City. Haven't been back since. We're finally coming back. Tickets are low for that show, so don't wait. MXPX and the Atari is going to see you there. Tickets are also low for Denver, Colorado, and for New York City. So don't wait. Probably going to be gone by Christmas. Uh, we'll see you out there. MXPX and the Guitaris uh, kicking it for 2024. And then um, we'll be planning some other international dates, some other U.S. dates as well. Um, so if you're not on this list I just mentioned, come fly out. But... Also, we'll be uh, we'll be going to Australia in 2024. Not ready to announce it yet. Um, UK is in the works. South America, back to Asia, Canada, Western Canada. We're going to be going all over the place. Um, we're just still planning a lot of the stuff and trying to sell these shows, you know. But um, doing what we can and appreciate you guys so much. My guest, Adam Nye. Adam Nye is the singer and songwriter from the band Too Bad Eugene out of Santa Cruz, California. We go way back, uh, produced their first record, At Any Rate, a uh, great record. And they have they have quite a few records. They have At Any Rate, they have Moonlighting, they have Distance, and they have this new new album coming very soon called Battle Scars. Uh, you'll hear all about that and a bunch of really interesting stuff. We talk about Future Shock into ancient civilizations and the possibilities there. Uh, we talk about, you know, how change is constant, uh, not necessarily good or bad change, but just change. And uh, we talk about economics and music. We talk about what success means to Too Bad Eugene. Uh, we get into some of the early influences. Um, Adam's a great musician, a really great songwriter, really proficient at playing. And um, you'll know, you'll definitely know a lot of his influences because I'm influenced by a lot of those bands and artists as well. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, by the way, I want to mention this, even though we talk about it a little bit, especially towards the end of the podcast. Too Bad Eugene has a, 
a Kickstarter right now, and it's only going four more days after this podcast is out. So it's this week only. Uh, go go check out Too Bad Eugene. Go find their socials. I'll put links on the show notes, and you can find their Kickstarter like that. Um, and if you're a fan, hey, help them out. And help yourself out by uh, pledging something for the new rock, uh, new record. Uh, the song I heard so far, and we talk about it, is a, is a good song. So without any further ado, here's Adam Nye. Hey, what's up? What's up? Not much. How you doing? Good, good. So what's new, Adam? Where are you at? You in California? I'm, I'm in Santa Cruz, California, where I live. Where are you at? Bremerton, Washington. Did I see you like in LA today? <laughs> Not today. <laughs> it's snowing yeah, here. It's, snow. We got our first snow. Wow. Yeah, it's cold. It, we don't get snow where I'm. No, you don't. You don't get snow in California. It's the perfect, the perfect state for weather. Unless you like they snow. Get it from Tahoe. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, I was going to say unless you like snow, but then just go to Tahoe or Big Bear or whatever it is. Or Big Bear is Big Bear in Tahoe, or is that that's South, right? That's in the like Southern Sierras, which we don't really go to. Where where I'm at, if we want snow, we go to Tahoe. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I've like been to five both. Hours. We played yeah. Big Bear once. Um, I can't remember what it was, like a Vans thing or some kind of deal. Like we were like, we had to like go up the lift with our guitars. <laughs> and we were playing at this like you know area, and then people just ski by and and snowboard by and that stuff. That sounds so fun. It was, actually it was all right. I was like, I just wish we didn't have to play because I wanted a snowboard. I was like, man, I want a snowboard. <laughs> did you get a chance afterward? We did after. Yeah, we did. You know, it's funny. There's a few times like we used to do this tour in Canada called Snow Jam, Snow Jam Tour, mm. and then it was there was Snow Core. There was all these different, you know, board stiff up here in. in Seattle area, but um, that was that was crazy because you just tour around Canada, and we were in eastern Canada, and I remember the the mountain being so chill, because on the east coast the mountains just aren't as big as they are you know the Rockies on the west coast. So I'm used to like Mount Baker, I'm used to Snoqualmie. I mean even, even Snoqualmie isn't that big, but it's got some Hayek and Alpental has some pretty steep steep runs but yeah i just noticed that we were doing snow jam we got to go snowboarding and it was just like being on the bunny hill the whole time (laughs) (laughs) canada everything's nice even the mountains (laughs) (laughs) yes that's a good way to put it (laughs) well uh what do you want to talk about today i know you know you got a new song is it out or is it coming out it comes out uh this next uh thursday okay so it'll be out it'll be out because this This podcast is going to come out the 18th, December 18th, Monday. Okay. So not this coming Monday, but next Monday. Okay. So then, yeah, we'll, we we, so we're running a Kickstarter that ends the 21st. So that'll be. Whoa, we're leading right to the end. Okay. All right. So I forgot that you wanted to talk about the Kickstarter. I think you mentioned that briefly somewhere and I just kind of spaced on it, but Kickstarter's (laughs) Kickstarter is is crazy. I mean, we did it for our our, our twenty or twenty eighteen album, our self titled. Um, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the new music. Let's talk about Kickstarter. Definitely, kind of seems interesting because you really get your crowd involved. You get the the audience involved in uh, when you do a Kickstarter campaign. So, um, yeah. where to begin? Uh, new song. It's out as this podcast. You know, by the time this comes out, it'll be out. So the song song's yeah. called. Shake, uh, it's called shaking my fist at clouds. Shaking my fist at clouds. Now, it's kind of a Simpsons reference. Okay, okay. So you guys have had a lot of satire in your songs. You've had a lot of commentary. Let's say very opinionated. You've all, you know you've always had something to say. You know, comment on society, comment on this story, this situation. For sure, this seems like another comment. I feel like is it, but is it? Is it satire, or is it a is it an actual direct? Um, good, good question. Is it a direct complaint? Because if it's satire, then that means you're kind of on the side of some of the things you're saying. I mean, 
Uh, yeah, I, good I, question. Hmm. Honestly, I don't I don't even know that the song knows or that I know. Like I it, th- the reality is I do honestly feel the way I sound in the song sometimes and that bums me out about myself. And you right? don't but you don't always like care that much. Like it seems like if you write a song about it you care so much, but you're just maybe you're just like, "Oh, this is an interesting observation yeah, no, was, about it, life." It was meant to be um, kind of playfully uh, jabbing myself and other middle-aged dudes that keep complaining about how the world isn't like it was when we were kids. So it's okay. like, why, why should it be? At, um, f- at first, I took it as, oh, he's he's future shock. He's writing a, that the world shouldn't be changing. And then I was like, no, 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 no. He's mentioning this because it's the feelings we have, but then we – but then he's realizing it, and so it's satire. That's what I what went through my brain. Yeah, that, I think that's the right way to put it, especially because I hear, when I hear other people kind of our age and older sound that way, the, the, the whole idea of like, man, uh, the kids these days and that kind of that yeah. kind of line. And then I hear my, uh, it, 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 it just bugs me out. It's kind of like, what? How did we respond to adults to talk that way when we were teenagers? It it, it just made them irrelevant. Um, and so when I hear myself say anything like that, I'm like, dang, I, I don't want to go that way. Um, just kind of getting old and complaining about everything. So it's meant to be a big shut up to myself. And, and he, you know, <laughs> yes. uh, it, no, it's totally meant to be. It's making fun. You'll see we, uh, we made a video for it, which is totally like we're walking with canes and acting like old guys and uh um making fun of ourselves yeah there's a there's a like, companion piece on the record just like a short like minute song minute long called uh, like transition called making peace with clouds mm. that comes like several tracks later um and uh yeah, it, it just it kind of has a, a a reprise of the of the of a riff from the song, mm-hmm. uh, and it just says the world keeps changing and I feel fine. Kind That's of cool. Our, yeah. Okay, so so if you uh, if you give it enough, if you invest enough time in in the new music, you're gonna you're gonna realize, oh, he's just kidding. He's like, he's fine. He's not. I hope it's he's not clear unhinged. in the song itself. It'll certainly be clear in the video. You know, you'd uh, be surprised. Okay, yeah, but you'd be surprised. People really take they they look into lyrics and they take them literally, and sometimes you're you're just you're really just trying to have a laugh with yourself, you know, and then hope hope somebody gets it right. Yeah, my wife kind of you know, especially because in the second verse there's a line where I say. Um, you know, they have to let me run the show. I teach them all the crap I know and put them to sleep when they get woke. <laughs> yes. I put that line in there. I was, I, that's my favorite line. I thought that was so funny. And I, it, because everybody, I, I have so many people in my life use the word woke <laughs> negatively, yeah. exclusively. Like, right. Oh, I'm so woke. I'm like, well, what do you want? You want everybody to go to sleep? Um, you, like, do you, yeah. do you want us to forget the lessons of the past? Um, uh, so anyway, I, but my wife was like, you're going to, everybody's yeah. going to hear you wrong on that. I'm like, whatever. Um, I, I, <laughs> I think she's right. But at the same time, like it's such an, it's, it is a kind of a nuanced thing because in some of the ways that people are woke are very annoying. And sure. in my opinion, it goes too far, but I do agree that it's better to be paying attention to what's going on than, than it isn't. Um, I find myself uh, not always putting my head in the sand. I don't mean to say that, but like I've said this before on the podcast, like I don't always keep up with what's going on in the world. Sure. And I feel like, am I, am I, am I being a bad punk rocker? You know, like I should pay attention to politics. I should pay attention to, to the, the things that are happening in society. And, and I feel like I, you know, the, the important things get nailed nailed to you you know you're not going to miss the big big things but you know are the nba you know tournament is it happening i don't know if it's happening tonight like (laughs) i'm a fan of nba but i just can't keep up with it all so like even things i like i'm not keeping up with um back to your just the the idea of the song because i love this topic it 
to me, it was like, okay, that's like future shock. It's like when people, when things are changing too fast and that's a real thing that people go through that, that I feel like I've gone through in my head a little bit. And like you're saying, you have to like kind of talk yourself down. Like, don't think that like, it's actually, you know, it's, things are going to change, you know, business, new businesses are going to come into the old building that left, you know, in your hometown, hopefully, you know, hopefully it's just not abandoned, but you know, it's, um, it's something that isn't talked about. I think, you know, it's like another thing, like we need mortgages taught, we need finance taught in school, like all these things. Another thing would be the fact that progress is a very real and unstoppable force in nature. And, and you can't, you can't let it overwhelm you in a way. And, and I think for people that don't realize that they get into the real world from like university, high school, whatever it is. And they're like, not only is, is business cruel and insane and fast paced, but, but it's just these, these things we weren't taught, like we weren't taught about it. You know, it's just like, Hmm. Yeah. Future, future shock. I don't know. How do you, how do you teach future shock? The 80s and 90s could have taught us how the world was going to change. They didn't know. And and Uh, it's not how the world changes now. I think it's just the fact that it always will change. You know, I've been talking to, uh, uh, Tom Ticcelli. He's like, works with MXPX and a bunch of bands, but, um, we always get into talking about ancient civilizations and Mm. ancient aliens or, you know, whether or not it's aliens, is it, is it, past humans or whatever like Mm. and i wonder what your thoughts are on have you ever thought or or talked to anybody about the 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 very real possibility that we're not the first civilization here on earth like we're just maybe it just got really small and that's what the adam and eve story is is like they didn't know like back then there's no internet there's no nothing so like adam and eve thinks they're the only people on earth right so there could be a a few pockets of those types things happening it just so happened that whatever this story survived and there could be other stories that died out because those people literally died uh whether it's a a meteorite hitting the earth we don't know why you know the earth gets cold for a period of time and then gets warm we're in a warm period luckily or else we'd be dead but or at most of us we'd be dead right so all right, I'll stop talking because I could just go on. But like, I, I this kind of has to do with future shock, how progress just keeps happening. And, and maybe that happened so much that civilization ended and it could have been nothing to do with the people. It could have just been a, a cataclysmic natural event, uh, you know, like a, a meteorite hitting the earth and, and knocking everything out, a giant super volcano, hmm. whatever that is, right? So here we are, you know, whatever. Anything's possible at that point, even the existence of God. Mm. Well, yeah, that's, man, what a, what a, what a big topic, especially the idea of like the change is, is sort of inevitable. So what kind of changes might've happened in the ancient past? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I will say I, cause you know, I, I teach high school. So I, I, I work with a lot of pretty sharp kids Um who, you know, we have conversations like this. Mm-hmm. And one thing I, I, I do kind of uh, say a lot is that change is constant. I'm not sure progress is constant. I think right. progress and regress are happening together all the time. Sometimes things are going forward. Sometimes you're kind of, you know, there's evolution, there's de-evolution. There's Devo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, I agree uh, with you. I agree with you. Yes, absolutely. So not always progress. Like, even in the song, I'm like, I'm not being, you know, the idea that things aren't the same as they were when, that, as we got used to them mm-hmm. is something we need to kind of get over. But the idea that all change is for the better, it's like, sometimes it's for, it's for indifferent. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, you know, like, especially when I think about the music realities, uh, something I was involved in, stepped away from, and have been re-entering for the past few years it's so different. And I know you lived through that whole change being a part of it. I had nothing to do with it for like 15 years. And then stepping back into it, I'm like, dude, it's changed so much. And I don't know what to make of all the change. Um, A lot like ancient civilization to modern civilization, right? (laughs) I was in the cave during those times, just like freezing my ass off. (laughs) Yeah. It's kind of the reality. I had my head in the sand. Um, and st- in, in coming back into it, I'm like, oh, whoa, 
it's <laughs> things have definitely changed for the worse. Yes. <laughs> it, I mean, I don't want to say that universally. I want to say if you are a person who wants to make music and like oh, God. Uh, enjoys as I do, do I, like making a record is like my favorite thing in the world. And the fact that I didn't do it for so long. And now we we're, this is our second record in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, it's addictive and I love it, but I'm like, Oh, there's like no way to make money at that. Um, well, <laughs> like, okay. So it's so, not on our level. Like, you know, at the, at the level too bad Eugene's at it's, you don't make a record to make a bunch of money from it. Cause the economic realities where in the nineties, it wasn't that difficult to, uh, you know, turn a profit from making a record and selling it. Yeah. Um, people were used to spending 15 to 20 bucks a pop, on a CD, and that was kind of the only way they could get their hands on the music. They could copy it. They could burn. Yeah, even that, like even burning CDs, wasn't really happening when mm -hmm. you know I was making my first couple of records. Now, like it, it was so depressing at first, just to realize, oh, there's just it's almost for sure going to lose money. Like on the yeah. on the making the record side of it, right? But I just had to kind of accept. I'm like, well, it changed. And it like what I was used to doesn't work now. So see what's going on now. And was I ever making the, the records to make money? No, it's it's love. It's 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 you do this thing because you love it. But the economic realities have definitely you know. I, I've tried to get my head around how is how is it? I can. It's easy for me to see how, it, from my perspective, it seems worse. Mm -hmm. How is it just different, but not good or bad? And are there ways that it's good? That it's changed. I'm trying Absolutely. to just kind of get I'll say, my head I'll, in that place. I'll say one thing. You know, back in the day, there were less professionals. There, there were professionals, and it was harder to get there. It's maybe just as hard to get there nowadays, like you're saying. It's harder. But there were, the amateurs weren't making any money then either. So no. I feel like in that way, it hasn't really changed. It's just what you have to do to be a professional has changed, and how you make your money has changed. But... Aside from that, it's so much easier as an amateur to make a record. You can kind of do it on your phone if you have a phone. You know, you. <laughs> yeah. you know, some people, you know, if you have enough time and talent, you can make a really good sounding record on your phone, I'm sure. I've recorded some vocals in a hotel room on my iPhone, and they've made it on records. But you don't <laughs> want to do that for the whole thing, probably. But um, just the access, you know, obviously you can, you can sign up for these, like, internet services to get your music everywhere. So that's easy to get in, but it's also makes it harder because then there, you're just competing against so many more acts out there. So yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like every good thing also introduces a bad thing into the paradigm, but. That's right. Yeah. It's kind of getting, being okay with the fact that things change and you got to kind of let your paradigms shift. Mm -hmm. I'll say this for anybody going like, is it really not worth it to start, you know, I think you have to give yourself 10 to 20 years in a career in music, unfortunately, to make money. And mm -hmm. there probably are much faster, much better careers as far as like making money and making money faster and even making more money. Obviously, finances, we talked about that. But, uh, mm -hmm. but if you want to make money, it's going to take 10 minimum, 10 years minimum, unless you're one of that like 0.5% of superstars and and all of those Billy Eilishes are all they're all signed to record labels much much sooner than they actually release music. They they have a development deal. They're sure. developed as an artist. They do demos. They do songwrite. They just keep stacking up all this material and they finally go, okay, they're ready. We got some songs. Boom, boom, boom. So like even th the people that are actually hitting right away aren't hitting right away. They've been working mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Good point. That's a great point. So you you need to give yeah. yourself a lot of time, a lot of a lot of, you know, investment into what you're going to make your career and it's going to be 10 years before you make any money. And there's no guarantee you'll ever do that, of course, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean that's where for for us um the last 3 years have been uh have been educational and where it's come to has been um it's been really freeing just especially just kind of realize pretty quickly this is not gonna hit in a way that is gonna be like <laughs> i can quit my job right uh, but, 
but it's like okay fine so the, the question is just like um i mean it wasn't even like we went into it with even that suspicion it was just like i miss this we just need to get back to it um no matter you know it's not that you're not thinking it'll hit but you're just like you're doing what you're doing and if it hits cool but but, but there's certain things you kind of have to do in order for things to hit. There's so right. much money that gets spent to make a hit record, to make a hit song. You mm-hmm. know, Taylor Swift, all these songs that are so good and, and big and all that. And th- so much money has been spent, like millions and millions of dollars have, have, has been spent. Right, um, which, which and, we don't have. Which we don't and have, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a good thing on that score that, the you know, things have, uh, have changed um, I was like 19 when Tooth and Nail Records heard Craig's brother and was willing to throw a pretty serious amount of money our way to make a record. I'm in my 40s now, and there's nobody that's throwing money uh, to, to you know to make a to make a new Too Bad Eugene record. But the cool thing is we don't need it. Yeah, um, I'm. It's not a make or break thing for us. Like we've got jobs. Um, so, you know, our, it, it, we don't depend on it for, uh, for the money. So it like it being able to just to come from a place of, of, um, absolute love for just making the music, the, the people that hear it, the shows we're playing tend to be pretty intimate, but the people there are rad. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, there's something just very freeing about that. Don't kind of have to worry about where the trends are. Um, there's, you know, with the internet and all that, like you can find your people, you can find the people that want your music and that are encouraging you to feel like y- your records mean a lot to me. Keep it going. I'm like, okay, we're gonna, cause, it, uh, it, it's, it's addictive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, making and releasing music. It's like, uh, it, it's kind of my midlife crisis. It's like the, <laughs> the thing that I just kind of have to be doing right now. I, I feel that way. I feel like um, the more I do, like, whatever it is, like, every time I put an album out or a song, it's like, okay, that's another thing on this, like, thing I can't take with me when I die anyway. So whatever. But it's almost yeah. like I just want to put it out in the world and have it there and so that it, it can live on or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I don't. There's I, something about that. Yeah. I try not to think too too often about my demise, but they say, you know, memento more, they say you should, you should think about your death every day. Right. So that you, you don't get complacent and you don't get, there's healthy ways of of reminding yourself constantly that your life has an expiration date. Yeah. 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 You know, the, the, the main, you know, the thing about, I don't know, I, I feel like placebos real, like that kind of thing. Like your mind is so powerful that if you think you're not going to be successful, you're not going to be successful. Um, Now, if you think you're going to be successful and you don't do anything, you're also not going to be successful. But, but um, I wonder if that, have you ever thought of that when you're like, Oh, we're not going to be anything, but like, isn't there that just, everybody has that just thing in the back of their mind in the bottom of their heart. That's like, there's a chance. There's a chance somebody. Sure. Oh yeah. There's a chance no, Green Day sure calls. <laughs> but it's also, you know, and I know this is probably cliche, but it's like you have to constantly interrogate yourself about what you think success is. Um, right. Okay. And so for for me, like I have to have uh, an idea of what I think success for Too Bad Eugene is that is like achievable and reasonable and sustainable. Um, you know, to me, I'm not doing this for a couple of years. And if we don't hit, um, you know, a million streams in a year, I quit. It's like um, the yeah, I mean, there definitely is a threshold. What's your of su- like there's got to be some amount of energy that's given and received between an audience that makes this worthwhile. But I think I mean, to me, we're already there. Like so- there, there is an audience uh, the, the, the size of which is t- satisfying for me. I would love to see it grow. <laughs> uh, so like, what's your, what's your definition of success for too bad, Eugene right now? It can change always. Right. So my, my, like I'll say that a definition of success that we have not quite achieved yet that like I keep my eye on is if we can get to a place where there's, you know, um, there's activity, you know, all every year there's 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 some shows 
um, hopefully releasing music, and it's economically self-sustaining. If I didn't have to lose money doing it, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, for right now, I'm fine being in a period where like, no, we're, we have to push to get to that place. We're, we're putting money into this out of our own pockets um, because that's, that's the phase we're in. And yeah, I think if in five years that was still the case, uh, every time we, you know, we make a record, we're yeah. in the red. You know, it's, be, that's you, a fairly low bar, I think. Yeah. But that's yeah, great. the idea that it might hit and virality and all that kind of stuff, which I, I put no effort into uh, learning how that works. I don't study like how do you get the the big hit song, something like that. What I I just I listen to the music I love. I get, I take inspiration from it, mm-hmm. um, and then you know I hope to make a record that I can listen to a year or two later and be like I'm really happy with that. And I'll say like that's you know with our last record distance. Yeah, I, I I'm really proud of that one. Um, I'm really happy with it, but I think we've topped it with this new one. And uh, uh, I, yeah. I can't wait to hear people hear it. So to me, that's success. Just making music we love, being able to kind of keep uh, never making something out of obligation, yeah. never doing it because it's like, well, it's been it's been a couple of years. Better do the next one. It's like if it's if it's coming from just um, real energy and love and passion to do it from within us. Keep going. Yeah. And I think fans of, of the style of music that we play really, they really like the authenticity. They like the realness of the artist talking about what they're going through, whatever it is. Right. And For it, sure. And it, yeah. There's a connection there. There's a connection there. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's what I think you don't get with a thousand million people out there. You know, like, you know, um, I think punk rock, honestly, punk rock, if there is any musical group that, that, is a little bit more real, it is going to be the punk rockers. So even like a big show like Green Day, most of those people are like us, you know, they're just people, right? So, but when you think we of like... We saw Green Day on that Hella Mega tour. Yeah. My daughter wanted to go. And it was like, I looked around, I'm like, this is this is definitely not a punk crowd. This right. is like... You, you can't be, everybody. right? But I'm like... I mean, Green Day, you know, they've evolved, but they're still, you know, it, it is still m- melody and energy that drives them. And I still love hearing it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's not a punk crowd because there's all the punkers are in there, but there's there's just so many. It, there's not enough punkers to fill the place. Right. Because that's no. punk rock, like, <laughs> is such a small niche genre. Um, and. There's a distaste for like I love the music I love this band this is not real like it, it, a gigantic baseball stadium I'm like I would <laughs> yeah. way rather be in a club I, yes. I would way rather be with like five six hundred people in a sweaty club than in these baseball yep. stands or whatever That's why Green Day does those like secret shows and and yeah. bands like Foo Fighters do those secret shows because they're like yeah they're playing stadiums but they 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 love those old days you know that they can't sure. get back to well, yeah. Down front in the stadium looks fun. It looks sweaty <laughs> and intimate down there, but we're up in the stands. Crushed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's getting crazy with the crowds these days. Um, that Travis Scott, uh, Houston, was it Houston or Dallas show? Like people died in the audience because people just got crushed. No people way. are dying like kind of regularly. It's like it's like school shootings these days. It's like, oh, yeah, another, another few people yeah, died in, a, in an audience. Yeah, not something I knew about. No, I mean it's just these huge, huge Country? crowds. Travis Scott is hip hop. Oh, like trap kind of like yeah, really modern young kids like yeah. Interesting. Yeah, um, I, I think he was dating one of the Kardashians or something like that. He has like a kid with a kid or two with with one of the Kardashians. Don't you know this? Come on. Totally over my head. <laughs> <laughs> this is like old news. Anyway. This is like, like last year. It was like a big controversy. Yeah. But if he's... it's not Taylor Swift related, I don't hear about it. Because my daughter, oh. I have a 16 year old daughter, and I hear all the, the Taylor Swift updates. Somebody just know. died in South America at a Taylor Swift audi- uh, show. I, I did know about that. But that was yeah. from like heat, right? That wasn't from like. It was uh, due to heat. It was so hot. Yeah, so hot down there. And. and I mean, if yeah. you know, like Warp Tour back in the day, right? As Warp Tour went on, it got hotter and hotter. It was like the just year never we let did up. Warp Tour, 
it was crazy because it was like one of them, like the one in Fresno was kind of nice. There was grass everywhere. <laughs> kind of nice. But then the one down in L.A., it was just in this massive parking lot, and it was like on the sun. It was so hot. It yeah. was uh, Travis Scott is back because he took like time off touring because of that. Like he, he got – killed in the in the music press at, at least in the music press if not like the social media type mm. press but uh he's back touring again and his numbers are way down Jeez. nobody's really picked up on that it's not like a big story or anything but well that's what you i'm heard hearing it here. oh you heard it here like third <laughs> maybe, maybe but <laughs> it depends on who you are if you're listening to this podcast you heard it here first <laughs> no. i certainly heard it here first I don't normally keep up on news, like like I'm saying, but like this is kind of older <laughs> stuff, Travis Scott from back, you know, a year ago. Um, you know, but money, money always, you know, trumps all things. You kind of have to like act like you're sad, like, okay, somebody died, sorry about that, and then you like lay low for a minute, and then you just go back out and do do more. Well, especially if that, I mean, that re- re- literally is your job. I mean, if that's your bread and butter, it's like you got to get back to work. Yeah, I mean, usually it's like that's the organizers that should really be have enough sure. workers, have enough, you know, safety protocols in in place. Um, heat, though, I mean, heat's rough because you just don't know when somebody can't handle it. You know, they're, they're well, dehydrated. And the thing I read about that Taylor Swift thing was like the organizer organizers weren't letting people bring in water. They they had to buy it inside, uh, and then they changed after that yeah of course after that yeah they'll change yeah yeah but that's oh you die somebody died okay yeah like somebody has to die for any change dollars a bottle for water i guess yeah well that that's thing is like adam somebody has to die for any changes to be made in most business slash u.s slash most of western civilization and i i assume that it's not even, you know, it's probably the same in, in Eastern culture as well. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> let's not change anything. <laughs> so they're yep. with you. They're like, yes, shaking fist at cloud. Yes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. that I will say this about that in, in terms of like the relevance of that song. I wrote it as a joke. Um, I thought it was kind of funny, but I thought sort of in a dad joke kind of way that wouldn't connect. Um, but, you know, I, I was in the demoing process for the new record. And so I had a bunch of them and I, and I always make my family and like, Hey, I got a new song. You gotta check this out. And they're always like, "Mm, it's it's fine, dad. Um, uh, But that one, both of my kids were like that one, like our generation will actually appreciate you, uh, you know, telling yourself to shut up like this. Uh, They got the joke right away. Mm. Uh, They weren't like, I wonder if he's serious. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Maybe that's just because they know me. Right. Um, Right. Yeah. they were both felt like they appreciate it when someone of our generation says something like that. Cause they feel like they're constantly being told uh, that their generation is just like the worst. Cause they're always on their phones and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and they recognize there's some realities to, you know, some of the concerns that get flagged about how fast things are changing. And we're not necessarily always asking ourselves, is this good for us? Um, and we are starting, you know, the, the screen time things that you can like, your phone tells you how long you've been on it now. Right. Um, and so they're aware of those kinds of things, but just the idea that someone of our generation would be like, Hey, our generation, it doesn't need to be like it was um, when, we, when we were kids, not, not every change is bad. They were like, yeah, that's a good one. I'm like, oh, okay. So, I, I mean, that's honestly the reason it's the first single yeah. from the album was because it got my kids, kids vote. And otherwise, uh, if it, it's kind of a bummer for the kids if, like, oh, yeah, things are never going to be good because you didn't grow up when I grew up. It's like, why why give them that? Like, life should be – you have to make life what it is, totally. at, you know, each of you. My kids kind of struggle with that. My, like, my son – uh, he totally wishes he grew up in the eighties, uh, or the sixties or like he, he feels like there's a, there was, there were things going on when we were kids that have this nostalgic power and this sort of classic status that nothing of their generation feels that way to them. Mm. Um, it's too soon though. That's stranger things, which is like made 
I felt like Stranger Things is made for us. Right. It's this 80s nostalgia thing. So why would young kids love it? They love it. Yeah. And it's like my daughter totally digs that because she's like, it seems like things were cooler in the 80s. I'm like, and yeah, they kind of were. But it's weird that you think that. I was obsessed with the <laughs> 50s when I was a kid. Yeah. Teen, teenager. So like watching mm. watching uh, Outsiders, you know, being a greaser, like that was cool to me. Like, yeah, rockabilly. But that didn't that didn't catch me till later in life because my dad mm. was so into music, music of 50s and 60s. So I had that like, oh, that's dad stuff. Uh, and it right. wasn't until my 20s that I realized my dad stuff is amazing. Um, and, you know that I learned to kind of like own that as something I loved too. When I was like a teenager, it didn't feel cool to love what my dad loved. Right. But that was, what yeah, was <laughs> absolutely. My, my mom gave me a violent femmes tape. So, you know, like they were giving me like stuff from, that was kind of modern. Uh, but then like when I, the first thing I ever remember listening to was Willie Nelson. That was in the car. Mm. So like I had an eclectic sort of beginning to my musical you know, upbringing, but I, I, that's actually, I, I, I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but I, I was kind of wondering, like, how did you get your musical chops? Like, you know, it's like one thing to just, yeah, I play, you know, started playing music, but like, why do you play how you play? You've always, ever since, you know, we haven't met, you were good. You, you didn't get mm. better. You were just already good. So like how, you know, how much did you practice? Did you go to school for it? Did you what made you, uh, you know, get into music? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in a musical family. My dad uh, was always um, in a band from the time I was a kid. Um, actually, fun little side fact, uh, he was in a, uh, a band when he was in college in Connecticut in the 60s called uh, Uranus and the Five Moons. Mm -hmm. And Too Bad Eugene is doing a cover of a Uranus and the Five Moons song on our new album that my dad sings with me on. No it's way. Yeah. That is cool. Uh, it's yeah, I'm I'm super proud of that one. Full circle. Uh, it's the first cover song we've ever done on a record. Yeah, uh, That's and cool. it's you know, I don't know how many people have heard the original, but so yeah, he was always in bands, and I would go see him play and loved it. And there was guitars around the house, and I'd started picking them up pretty early. Um, and then yeah, uh, I asked for guitar lessons in like sixth or seventh grade, and my parents were happy to oblige, and um, so. And this kind of ties to what we were talking about before. Like my my dad, um, you know, had very strong music tastes. He, you know, we grew up in car rides listening to um, 50s and 60s stuff. A lot of like um, Everly Brothers and James Brown and then like early Beatles, like first five Beatles records. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear um, Eleanor Rigby until like college, uh, which is kind of funny. Um a lot of Rolling Stones and the Beach Boys. I would say Beach Boys more than anything. Uh, but then my mom kind of listened to whatever was on the radio. My sister was listening to like Madonna um, and, you know, pop stuff. I have two older siblings. Uh, and then my brother, I would say, was like the biggest influence on my early musical tastes um, and like the stuff I wanted to like listen to and play um, at first. Like when I was in seventh grade. Uh, you know, he, he listened to a lot of, you know, the cars and the police and you two. Um, but then also like he was a surfer in Santa Cruz. So there was a lot of like hardcore. Um, I first heard descendants and seven seconds and minor threat and circle jerks, all that stuff came through him. But then metal Metallica, especially was the first thing that was like mine. Nobody else in the family was listening to it. Right. And I first discovered that in like eighth grade while I was doing my guitar lessons and stuff. So that was what I started bringing mm -hmm. to my, my teacher. I'm like this Metallica stuff, show me how to do this. And he was like, great. I mean, that's, that's a Metallica is great for learning, you know, how to play guitar riffs. So yeah, that was, that was kind of how the chops came. Was, Every, yeah. So many people I know learned from Metallica. I didn't though. I learned from the descendants. <laughs> well, I mean, Beatles. It was in high school when I wanted when I switched to the bass, which um, yeah, both Descendants and Green Day were a huge part of. Like when when Green Day blew yeah. up, like freshman sophomore year of high school, uh, I loved them right away. Um, 
because it, it was kind of like my dad's music and my brother's music in this like perfect hybrid. And I was discovering Descendants at the same time. But the guitar was only so interesting, like especially for a guy who's like playing Metallica. Descendants and Green Day stuff both was like, this is kind of too easy on guitar, but the bass was doing really interesting things. So that was kind of why I started switching to the bass was because I wanted to learn all those Mike Dirnt bass riffs and Tony Lombardo and and Carl Alvarez mm -hmm. the bass things I could never do the Carl I, to this day I still can't tell what he's doing most of the time uh Carl's stuff on the bass is so incredible and unintuitive um but Tony's That's lines wild. were like you can sing Tony Lombardo lines they're like you know they're they're fun to play and easy to figure out usually yeah that's rad no I I, I can hear that you know like early sound you're, you're getting that sort of like by osmosis in the back seat of the car when your dad's just playing his jams that's what i need to do more of i need to like brainwash my kids by just not saying anything just start playing certain songs <laughs> it's probably too late now they're too old but uh that's uh, it's, how it, to brainwash it's, your kids that's, that's cool I, so it's funny because all, all of my friends kids are are way younger than mine um you know my 21 and mm. 16 but like, it's funny how all of them, they feel like they've been exposing their kids to really eclectic stuff. Uh, this is true for Andy Snyder, our old guitar player who's got young kids. And then Sam Skelton, one of our current guitar players, but he has some younger kids and both of their, they both have two sons and all four of those kids love Metallica, like more than anything. Like they feel yeah. like they've played them all this different stuff. And this is like when they're nine, like dad, play more Metallica. That's very interesting how how universal those guys have gotten. Yeah, and, and, how and Metallica isn't uh, a nostalgia act. They come out with new albums, you know, Clockwork, and they you know they come out with new tours, and they just keep going. And yeah. it's not like their last tour; it's just another Metallica tour. Let's go! I love and that. I, and sonically, like their newer albums, I think sound amazing. You go back and listen to the classic stuff; you're like. Is Saint this Anger is, is that is that considered new? Saint Anger? N no, and that one sonically <laughs> sounds mid. like garbage. <laughs> I know that's why I said it. Everybody always makes fun of that one. <laughs> ding, well, it sounded ding, garbage ding. when it first came out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the, there was that yellow one that was like last year, and I forget what it was called. And before that was Hardwired, and they both sound amazing. I just uh, I, I I have great. not checked them out yet, but. Mm. I'll have to do that. I keep current on Metallica. Yeah. Hey, you got to. Some things you got to keep current on. What well, else do you keep current on? Is there anything else you can think of that you're like always checking, like hoping they put out a new record or? Social distortion. I probably check mm. like once a month. It's like when is, because they've been talking about a new record for like, I don't know, five, six years. It's going to be another um, year at least, I think. Another year. Well, because yeah, Mike's sick. Mike's sick. Well, he's recovering from cancer. He's, uh, yeah. he's in, uh. He already had surgery, and then now he's just, I don't know, he might even be done with chemo by now, but mm -hmm. I don't know how long that stuff takes. Um, but yeah, but I, mean, I think he's doing well. They're a band, I, love, I like their newer records more than I like their, you know, classic ones. Right. There's a few bands like that. Um, Propagandi is another one. Like, when they release a new record, I get so excited, because I've... Um, same with Good Riddance, our like hometown heroes. Mm. Uh, I I love those those guys' stuff, but their last record, Thoughts and Prayers, is my favorite. Okay. Um, so bands like that, when when I feel like they're, and, it, and I draw oh face to face, their last record I think is for sh unquestionably their best. Uh, no way out but through. Um, yeah, there's a lot of bands that I've known and loved for a long time. And still like their older stuff, but where I feel like you're kind of doing your best stuff now. Um, yeah, that's cool. I yeah, it. it's great. It, it, yeah, face it, to face it, is great. They they sound great as ever. We we uh, they played with us over the summer. It was good. Rap. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen them live in a while. Let's talk. Let's let's wrap it up and and make sure everybody knows about the new album. What your plans are for it? When? It, yeah. You know, do you have a release date? Do you have what's what's happening with the new music? We don't have a release date. Uh, we have a release kind of window. Um, okay. Uh, it's going to be mixed starting, um, I think as of the time this comes out, it, it's like being mixed this week, um, I think. 
Um, but we, we just finished recording it like last week. Uh, the recording took forever, uh, <laughs> but I mean, it, it's something we just totally did, did on our own. Yeah. Like with the last record, I kind of learned how to do that. So going into this record, I knew what I was doing. Uh, so it, it was just scheduling that made it take so long to get us all together to do the recording sessions. Um, so we are targeting March, uh, which is a pretty quick turnaround if, if it's mixed by the end of this month. Um, we're doing a tour with a band called United Defiance, um, who like uh, they've got some Bay Area members and they've got some other guys that live out of state. Uh, I think one of them lives up near you. Um, okay. So yeah, we're doing a run of shows in um, California, Nevada, NorCal, Southern California. Uh, so we're trying to get the record out before that. Um, the, the album's gonna be called uh, Battle Scars. We'll be on People of Punk Rock Records. We'll be doing digital, CD, and vinyl. Um, and, yeah, we're running a Kickstarter to pay for it to get mixed okay. right now. Okay. Uh, that ends December 21st. Um, Where can people go to get the Kickstarter? The uh, If you go on our social medias, Facebook or Instagram, you'll see links. I'm, I'm posting about it all the time. Too bad you um, uh, There's like a bit.ly slash... TBE underscore Kickstarter 2024. That's a lot to remember, but if, I assume it's better just to go to our socials. Okay. Um, TBE. Uh, you can yeah. find the link for the, for the Kickstarters, and you can get um, – there will be a couple of variants of vinyl. Um, we'll sign those and send them to you. Same thing with the CDs. I got other kinds of uh, perks. One of them was get the single early, but that will be <laughs> – Maybe the next single? Coming out in days <laughs> the time you hear this. So yeah. That, that one might have uh, grown stale by the time anybody hears this. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about this record. Um, I'll, I'll say this about it. Um, I really, you know, like I said before, I really love and I'm proud of uh, that last record we made distance. Um, I love listening to that record. Having not made a record in a long time. One thing I didn't realize until kind of after we were done with it was my favorite songs on it don't necessarily necessarily translate live all that strongly. Um, some of them are kind of low in my range and then they go high and, mm -hmm. and we do them live and I think they're good. Uh, but there's a couple of faster songs on there that in our live sets, I'm like, well, this really connects. So yeah, I kind of leaned into that. This record is, I, I think it's, it's a bit higher energy. It's more of a punk record. Um, and the songs are, fun live the few we've got to play live i'm like ooh, i can't wait until these records are this record is out and uh it's going to be a party playing these songs live yeah that's awesome to hear right on well 2024 is going to be a good year for too bad eugene then yeah i hope so excellent yeah. all right um adam nye everybody thanks for doing it thanks for taking the time interesting yeah, thanks stuff for having me on yeah really appreciate it. that's cool and right. i i'm hoping to get the chance to see mxpx in 2024 if you guys have played Northern California, I'm there. We will. We're, we will. We will eventually. God, it's like <laughs> it's almost happened a few times. <laughs> All right, we'll make well, it happen. I, I'm stoked for you guys. You guys are new records, amazing. Uh, I love seeing you guys. Uh, all the videos you guys made were super rad, and uh, see playing a bunch of shows. Thank you. It's inspiring, man. I, I draw a lot of inspiration from it. Dude, thank you so much. Yeah, we're just like, you know, like like you. We're just trying to keep it rolling and, and have fun with it. So, so far, so good. Awesome. All right. <laughs> All right. See you. See you, Adam. Thanks. Peace. Thanks to my guest, Adam Nye. Too bad, Eugene. Make sure you check out their Kickstarter. It's it's only got four more days if you're listening when, right when this podcast comes out. So don't wait. Go find Too Bad, Eugene Kickstarter 2024. Uh, they need to get their new record mixed. It's going to happen either way, but if you're a fan, be part of it. It'd be great. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. I appreciate you guys. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe on whatever you're listening on. Rate, review if you want to go crazy and go go the extra mile. I'd appreciate that, of course. Um, subscribe to my YouTube page, My Carrera Video on YouTube. That's where I put out the podcast every week, but I do other stuff on there as well, but always trying to grow that channel. All right. That's it. Uh, if you want to call in, 360-830-6660. Okay? Call in, leave a message. Maybe you have a question. Whatever you want to talk about, we'll go for it. And if you want to submit 
your band, go to the My Carrera Podcast Facebook group, submit a YouTube link and a message there. We'll add it up. You'll be on the next uh, Music Monday. It'll be great. All right, mxpeaks.com for uh, tour dates. We have a bunch of tour dates. Seattle sold out December 30th. Uh, Merry Christmas to you all. Um, I don't know if we're going to be doing a Christmas Eve Eve full band MX Peaks live stream yet because we're upgrading our control room upstairs in the studio. And so we don't have the, you know, we just, we're just not ready yet. I'm not sure if it will be ready. If it is ready, you know, we're doing it. Um, and then 2024, January 6th, tickets are low. Hollywood Palladium, we're playing with Less Than Jake, Reliant K, and Smoking Popes. It's going to be awesome. Come out and see MXPX in Hollywood. Um, it's going to be the show of the year. It's, it's our very first show. We're just going to have a big blowout, inviting a bunch of our friends to come out and hang out with us. It's going to be great. So if you want to go, please don't wait. MXPX.com for those tickets. We're also going on tour. MXPX and the Ataris are playing a bunch of shows. New York City, uh, that's February 9th. Philadelphia sold out. Uh, we have uh, Atlanta, we have Orlando, we have Denver, we have Salt Lake City. Denver, Salt Lake City, uh, and New York are low on tickets, so don't wait on those shows. Don't wait on any of these shows, but those those are definitely going to sell out. I think most of these shows are going to sell out, so I wouldn't wait until 2024 to get any of these tickets. That's all I'm saying. All right. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing as always. Thank you for your orders. Thanks for supporting what we do. You know, MXPX is a mom and pop store. And, uh, you know, we have a small team sends out packages as soon as we get the orders, as soon as we can, we get those out. So we appreciate all your orders and all your, your, uh, even if you don't order anything, we appreciate you. Cause if you listen to the, the, the music, it means a lot to us and it really does help. So, uh, thank you. All right, you guys. Man, we didn't even talk to Adam about his Christmas song. Too Bad Eugene has a Christmas song. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Go check that out, too. Tis the season. Shout out to my boy, Bob McKnight, producing, being just generally funny and a great guy. And I he sends me all this funny stuff, and I, like, give him a one-word answer on a text or something, or I give him a heart or a ha-ha. It's not because I don't love you, Bob. It's because I was probably doing a live stream at the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it, you guys. Merry Christmas. See you next week. Peace. <laughs>